Well, it's the second day of 2019 LCS. I'm joined right now by Niski from Cloud9 with coverage brought to you by Alienware to talk a little bit about the start of the season, as well as his arrival on Cloud9. What's it been like for you the past couple of months since the deal got signed and everything is going and everything's happening? Um, I mean, I think the most important thing I'm trying to do, or like I've been trying to do, is I get synergy with Dennis, which is Vanskeren. Also, just trying to adapt to my new teammates because I never played with them before. I never met them before, too. And yeah, that's what's been going on. Yeah. And how do you think it's going so far? Do you, are you fully synergized with them, or is it still a work in progress? Um, I'm not fully, uh, like, we're not there yet, in my opinion. We're maybe at like 60%, 70%. And yeah, I mean, I'm been, we've been working on it really hard, to be honest. And I feel like this week, for example, the difference between today and yesterday was really huge. And yeah, I mean, we just got to keep going. And I'm pretty sure the next weeks will be the best team. So, yeah. Well, take me through uh, yesterday's game first, because I know, unfortunately, it didn't go the way that you guys were hoping, but it did seem like a pretty competitive match, at least, like, pretty close the entire time. So, what was your impression of that game? Um, i said say yesterday I played really passively, in my opinion. Um, I didn't play the way I wanted to play. And also, I don't think the team, like, as a team, we didn't play as we wanted to, compared to today where we actually played however the hell we wanted to, you know. And also yesterday, I feel like if we didn't fuck up on mid when Dennis died on his Nunu uh, and they didn't get Nash, it would be a really different game because we had a lot of poke. But once they got Nash, it was like, oh, guys, game is over and, you know. So let me ask you, do you feel as though you have a rivalry with Jensen or is this just like a narrative that's getting pushed on you? Um, I mean, I just find it funny because... I know that NA really likes BMing people and stuff, you know. And Do I'm we? I feel like EU's like the toxic region. This is what everybody tells me. Everybody says that NA is super passive aggressive and that EU is like actually aggressive. Okay, the EU players are usually BMing each other, but they like each other. Okay. And NA, it's like when you BM, it's like all the fans are also BMing that guy too. So it's like, like for example, when I BM Jensen, I mean, I didn't really BM, you know, I said that I would clap him. Everyone was with me and then. The moment I lost, they were all like, like all his fans were just like, oh, you're so shit and stuff, you know? So, I mean, it's just nice to have because it's, I won't say it's boring to be like, oh, well, play Jensen, better luck next time and stuff like that. And I'm just trying to get used to the memes as well. So, yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. You're adapting also to the memes. That's a good thing to adapt to. Now, <laughs> yeah. So do you do you but do you feel like there's extra pressure when you play Jensen? Like, are you hoping to to beat him this year and and sh prove yourself to be the better mid? I mean, I don't really care beating Jensen to be honest, because at the end we gotta beat everyone. Yeah. Um, I just wanna perform good against every mid, and Jensen is one of them. Like, he's one of the top mids for sure. So, yeah, I mean, performing against Jensen or Bjergsen or Crown or anyone else is just. It's the same for me, so I don't really care against who I play. Are they, so there's no mids in particular where you're like, uh, I don't know about this guy, I want to take this guy down, or he's like the real challenge for you or anything? I mean, I think the biggest challenge for me is probably Bjergsen, in my opinion. Because I feel like he's the, even though he's not the best in lane, he's just really smart about how to play the game. And I feel like that's what I lack the most as well right now. So, yeah, probably beating Bjergsen is going to be a big accomplishment for me. So, by the way, why did you decide? So, you were in North America previously, for those that don't know. Uh, then you went back to Splice. We were just discussing this before. Now you're back in North America. So, why return to North America? Um, I mean, this offseason was really weird because with the ESS franchising, Splice was not in, and then they were in again. And then I was already talking to a lot of teams within EU2. But then I just saw C9 as a big opportunity where I could grow insane because the team is in, is really good and they just made semifinals at Worlds as well and I really wanted a team where I could perform at my top level and improve as well because I feel like in Splice even though we're doing okay I was not really happy the way we're like fixing objectives and stuff yeah. and the way the organization was going too so I just feel like Sina was just a good opportunity and also I really liked Eric like Licorice I wanted to play with him as well and then yeah it was a good time to come back and I don't really mind being in NA or EU, so that's not really a big issue for me. So it's uh, you don't have any affinity towards North America. North American fans shouldn't be happy that you're... It's just wherever 
whatever the best situation is for you. No, I mean, uh, why? No, you fans will laugh, yeah. man. Yeah, you have to pick a side, all right? You can't just, I mean, you can't strand, stand in the middle between the two regions. I mean, <laughs> I think, okay, I mean, right now I'd say I like NA more because I'm in NA. But then once I'm back in the EU, if I if, traitor. No, if I go back in the EU, then I would probably you. But yeah, I mean, I like NA fans. They're they're fun. Um, they like memes way more than EU does. Okay. So EU are more, you know, they like it really more strict, I'd say. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, NA is nice, and I like being here for now. So I would say. What's it What's it been like being on Cloud9? Because they're a very unique team and a little weird, I would say. It's in some ways. Weird? Why? Weird? I mean. I don't know if you've noticed, uh, Sneaky's kind of an oddball. Even before he did the cosplay stuff, uh, he just liked to talk in memes. Like, uh, people told me, uh, so Apollo is playing with Rush now. In an interview I did with Apollo, he was like, yeah, like, I played with Rush before he was on Cloud9, and they kind of, like, messed him up whenever he went over there. Now he only speaks in memes. Like, he just uses Twitch chat memes and all this stuff. And it's like, this clearly Jetson and Sneaky did a number on him. Um, I mean, I don't know, it's just... We're just memeing the whole. I mean, I, we're just, yeah, like we're just memeing the whole day. You know, I'm just getting memed on as well every day. And then, you know, when you're not used to it, it's kind of weird in the beginning. But then, when you get used to it, it's like, uh, sure, you know, keep memeing me. I, I don't care. You know. This is this is why I said it's weird, and you're like, I don't think it's weird at all. <laughs> but you're used to it now. It's like a month in, you're like, you don't understand how strange it is. I mean, I love the Cloud Nine guys, and and I think they've they've done a good job with their team. But it's just kind of funny to see. It's a it's a different atmosphere probably from any other team you've been on, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, I knew like from talking to Dennis and to Eric that the atmosphere was really good here, and I mean that was a big plus of why I wanted to join C92 because for me atmosphere and like being like a family or like friends is really important, and that's what C9 told me they were, and that's what we are as well. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really happy on how we how do I say how we talk to each other. How we give feedback to each other and just we're just a family, you know. So we're just enjoying being together. Well, uh, is there anything that you want to say to any of the C9 fans? I feel like there's a big spotlight on you this year. So anything that you would like to say to them? Um, I would be one of the best millionaires at the end of the year for sure. Okay. Well, that's not great. I needed a headline, so you just helped. Thank you so much. You can check out the rest of my coverage of all things esports right here on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> well, hello. It's so good to be back again here at LCS. I can't escape this job, apparently. I'm just, I'm always going to be here doing content for all of you. Uh, there is good news, though. A year ago at this time, I was uh, unsure of what my future looked like as an independent content creator. But after a year, I can say pretty fe feeling pretty good. A lot of that, by the way, because of Alienware, who's locked in this year uh, with us. They're super cool. And the coolest thing, by the way, I don't have to pay uh, the double lift interview fees anymore. You know those were building a lot last year. Uh, both Alienware and U.GG, because of their relationships with Peter, that fee is waived. Uh, so thank you so much to, to both of them. Be sure to check out uh, the new Alienware stuff that just came out CS, including their Area 51M. There's a link in the description below for that. And thanks again for watching my interview.